children, next we're going to talk about the two types of inflation. There's two types of inflation that we need to worry about. We've got cost push inflation and demand pull inflation. All right, first let's talk about demand pull inflation. Demand pull inflation isn't exactly the end of the world. What happens here is aggregate demand increases. We start buying more of everything. As we start buying more of everything, prices go up. As aggregate demand shifts to the right, price level increases, we're experiencing some inflation. So it's named after what happens. It's aggregate demand increasing, so it's demand pool inflation. Our purchasing of goods and services drives up prices. Not the end of the world again, and part of it is because we have an increase in our real GDP, so this will be happening during an expansion. Uh, our unemployment rate will be decreasing, so prices are going up. Eventually, uh, we'll adjust, shorten our supply will shift back to the left as wages increase and some of these people lose their jobs. The other type of inflation is called cost push inflation. This is a lot worse. Cost push inflation is going to be caused by a negative supply shock. Short run average supply will shift to the left. So essentially what's happening is input prices are going up. The cost of doing business is increasing. Uh, this is generally going to cause by, be caused by the price of something like oil. Something that's used for the production of everything increasing. Price of oil goes up. Oil is used in the production of everything. It's harder to make things. Everything costs more to produce. So short run average supply shifts to the left. Cost push inflation. The cost of doing business is increasing, causing the prices of everything to go up. Price level increases. We have high inflation. Real GDP decreases. So we have really high unemployment too. We have unemployment and inflation going up at the same time. So it's bad. People have lost their jobs and everything costs more. It's really bad for people. Something else to keep in mind. This has a second name and its name is stagflation. Cost push inflation, the economic situation that's so bad they named it twice. <laughs> so it's cost push inflation, the cost of inputs increases, driving up the price of everything. And it's also called stagflation because we're in a recession. There is a, uh, the, the economy has become stagnant, inflation because the prices are going up too. Okay, next we're going to talk about how output gaps close. Output gaps, like a recessionary gap that we have here, can close automatically. They're going to close automatically due to a change in wages. We've heard Adam Smith or read Adam Smith and saw that our economic system is based on the idea of laissez-faire. Sit back and let the market correct itself. Well, this is how the market actually corrects itself. So let's say we've fallen into a recession. In a recession, there is going to be downward pressure on wages. And what I mean by that is there's going to be pressure for people to accept lower wages. When we go into a recession, let's say that I used to work up here in full, uh, full employment output. We were in long run equilibrium, full employment output. I worked at HEB and I made $12 an hour. A recession has now hit. Uh, production has fallen off and I've been let go. I have been laid off because of a recession. I've been out of work like six months. After all this time, I'm eventually going to be willing to settle for lower wages. Uh, I, at first, I might have insisted on still making my $12 an hour, but once I'm out of work for like six months, I'm going to accept lower wages, maybe $10 an hour, even down to $9 an hour. I'm not the only one doing that. As people begin to accept lower wages, our, our businesses are going to hire more people back. Short run average supply will shift to the right. Once they can pay people less, businesses will hire more people. And we'll get back to longer in equilibrium. Price level will come back down. So prices and wages decrease. So inflation is down. Wages are down. But we get back to full employment output. And our unemployment rate decreases as real GDP increases. So output gaps will fix themselves. The only issue is that this takes time. It could take years. And I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to wait years for my job to hire me back. Just like in a recession, in an inflationary gap, there's going to be upward pressure on wages. When we're in an inflationary gap, our unemployment rate is below the natural rate of unemployment. So we've got more people working than we would have if we were at full employment output. Prices are rising. Prices are rising because people are buying things. More people are working. More things are being bought. Aggregate demand is increasing. Prices are going up. Okay, 
not really that big of a deal at first, but there is going to be an upward pressure on wages. As, let's say, I used to be working here, down here, uh, if average demand used to be in full employment output, I was working at $12 an hour. Now, prices have increased. Everything that I like buying costs like, I don't know, 50 cents to a dollar more. I'm starting to feel some pressure there. I'm feeling like my dollar isn't buying me as much stuff anymore because it literally isn't. So, over time, as prices keep rising, me and everybody else I work with are going to start going up to the boss and saying, hey, you need to pay us more because we can't afford everything that we need to live. And so the bosses are going to eventually say, all right, like, eventually we're either going to unionize or protest or quit until our, our pay goes up. So eventually, bosses will say, okay, we'll give you a raise of a dollar or two dollars an hour. As they give that raise, wages are increasing. As wages increase, businesses will fire some of the people because now they don't have as much money to spend on labor, uh, at least if they want to maintain the level of profit that they have. So what happens is our price level goes up, our unemployment rate is going to go up as well as we move back to full employment output. And so it happens here. Prices have gone up. In the long run, however, we can always get back to full employment output because wages are fully flexible in the long run, and so wages will rise to meet that higher inflation.